Hey everyone, I'm Scott Cunningham, AKA Scottsy Business. And today we're gonna to be talking about Ethereum alternatives or Ethereum killers as people like to call them. Uh, just jumping through many, many different cryptocurrencies and lightly covering them. We're not really going in depth or anything here because more or less, my opinion is that none of these are really competing that seriously with Ethereum. The biggest thing that most of these offer is uh, lower gas fees, which they all offer. So it's not really unique to any degree. Plus there's been chains that are similar to Ethereum that have been around for many, many, many years, like Tron, for example, uh, which have very low fees and still not really been much of a competitor with Ethereum or really, you know, been an Ethereum killer. So we'll talk about why I don't think any of these other coins will um, because again, if that would have been the case, it would have already have happened, but we'll dive into all that. We'll talk about several different coins. I do think some have some competition or like they offer some really great stuff, but they're just nowhere near the level that Ethereum is at. And, uh, we'll talk about exactly why I think that is. And, um, to be clear, these coins that I'm calling, you know, Ethereum alternatives are more or less coins that have NFTs, uh, smart contracts, tokens, things like that. A lot of the features that Ethereum offers, sometimes they only offer, you know, a couple of the features or some of the features, but I wanted to just cover a bunch of these examples as to why I don't really think that these are competing with Ethereum. And I mean, as long as we get ETH 2.0 sometime reasonably soon, um, I think a lot of these projects are not really necessary or really that useful once we actually get that. So we'll talk about all that in just a moment after a quick word from my sponsor today. A big thank you and shout out to my sponsor Cake Wallet, which is an open source non-custodial Bitcoin and Monero wallet that also has a built-in exchange. It's available on iOS and Android. Okay, thanks again to my sponsor. So what are some of these coins that I'm referring to? Well, I mentioned Tron and I actually think Tron could have been really, really great. It offers so many things that we wanted with Ethereum, including low gas fees, um, being able to basically spend zero on gas if you stake a small amount, which you can easily get back after 72 hours at any point. A lot of people are familiar with the Tron ecosystem. Uh, they just recently announced USDD, which I think is terrible. Uh, and largely part of the reason as to why Tron has not been very successful is because of the poor leadership from Justin Sun, the uh, founder and creator. Realistically, I mean, he's acquired multiple platforms in the past, like DLive and Steemit, and he ruined those platforms. Um, it's unfortunate, but really though, Tron offered everything that we needed, dApps, tokens, NFTs, everything you can imagine with extremely low gas fees. It's been around for many, many years. So if that was all people were looking for to really have an ETH killer, then it would have already happened. Um, the big issue with Tron is that it's extremely centralized and we'll, you'll find that a lot of the chains that are presenting themselves as alternatives to Ethereum are also very centralized or they sacrifice you know, certain aspects of Ethereum in other ways, or maybe they're just not far enough along yet. Like, you know, Cardano, for example, barely has anything built on it, uh, but there's been so much hype around it for like the past two years for tokens and all these things, but really nothing has come of it. There's even chains that are older, um, you know, like Neo and some other tokens we'll talk about. They've been around for a very long time and they're not really doing much either. So it's not just about the gas fees. But again, with ETH 2.0, I think that will pretty much be solved entirely. I know they keep pushing it back, but, um, you know, I'm pro Ethereum, you know, in this way that I really think it has the market. It has everything that we need. And uh, as you'll see when we go through this, a lot of these other platforms aren't really offering you anything better and or they're centralized or have other drawbacks in different ways. So some of the coins that I wanted to talk about are Hive. Uh, we just talked about Tron. Hive, I think, is is really good. It's just such a small market cap and such a small user base that it's really hard for it to compete with the likes of Ethereum. It does offer great solutions, extremely fast, uh, next to nothing for fees. You can even earn from curation and it's got uh, social media embedded and, and built out. I think one of the biggest hallmarks of 
a chain being mature with its like dApps and development and things like that is that they've really gotten into social media. They've already covered all of the basics, which most chains are still, you know, they're still just copying Ethereum dApps. They're just coming out with all the basics that we already have. It's nothing really innovative, nothing really new. But once chains start to go beyond that, they have interesting, unique solutions. Um, Cosmos has stuff like that is this as well. I think Hive and Cosmos are pretty much one of the only two that are actually good out of a lot of the ones we're going to talk about. But uh, I'll we'll go through these. Uh, Solana, Internet Computer, uh, ICP, Theta, Binance, uh, Binance Coin, Sys, ADA, Dot, Atom, Cosmos, as I was saying, Neo, Avalanche, Tezos, Omi, and EOS. Quite a uh, quite a lot there. Um, we can knock out a few really quickly without having to get super in depth. Um, Binance, Solana, Avalanche, EOS, Theta. Omi and Tron are all highly centralized in comparison to Ethereum. Um, and yes, some of them may offer very low gas fees. A lot of them are extremely centralized. Go through a couple examples. Uh, in my last video, I talked about Solana and Sol Lend, how they're basically debating whether or not they should just take 170 million uh, uh, worth of Sol of users funds and do a bunch of trades on their behalf with emergency powers and all this craziness. Plus they've shut down their blockchain like 10, 12 times now. It's like, seems to be the most reoccurring blockchain that goes down um, and it's just highly centralized. EOS, uh, highly centralized in terms of where the concentration is, which isn't as big of a deal, but you can barely use EOS. I mean, even with staking a ton of EOS, uh, the gas fees are so high and it's so congested that it's so challenging to use EOS. You have to use like EOS IO and it's just really not effective as a, uh, as a competitor to Ethereum. And I would never really put EOS anywhere close to Ethereum. And ironically, uh, you know, if you thought maybe money was the issue, well, they had the largest domain acquisition in history when they bought voice.com to try to you know, build out this voice.com platform as a social media platform on EOS. Of course, as I always point out, it was just an NFT hype trying to cash in on that NFT stuff. And uh, it failed epically because the platform itself doesn't really have many good dApps. It's not working very well. They tried to get into social media, which I would again say is a sort of signifier that that chain is getting pretty mature but since eos was always very poorly run it didn't really work out very well uh, again when we talk about tron um you know they have i believe the platform was called i can't think of it off the top of my head but it was the only video platform for tron and it didn't work at all. Like it, it was very, very poorly run. I tried to use it over many years, kept trying to give them time to fix it and work on it. It never really worked out. Uh, they tried to, they acquired DLive and Steam it, completely tanked those, even when we were in the bull market and just, you know, everything Justin Sun seems to touch is a total failure. So I would never liken Tron to being, you know, matured because they've got social media because clearly, the way they run things, it just doesn't work out very well. Uh, EOS and Tron really end up just being places for people to gamble, not really for a whole lot else. Uh, when we're talking about like Theta, for example, uh, this is another great one where they had an okay model, which I always heavily criticize because you can't really get your money out of Theta.tv. And then they finally allowed you to withdraw onto their NFT platform. But even in the withdrawal process that I tested out again yesterday, it says you will never be able to withdraw this from the NFT platform. And I thought that doesn't make any sense. Why would I withdraw from a place where it's extremely challenging to withdraw only to go to a place where you can't withdraw, plus it has KYC and you can only do $20 worth of transfers or withdrawals per day. Pretty laughable that that's that people were like, oh, your video age uh, poorly on Theta. And now we look at it and it just seems like the biggest scam ever, honestly. But uh, Omi, 
I'm gonna have to do a full video on Omi because it's so popular in the NFT space, but it's all run through Vivi, which is completely regulated by the Apple and Google Play Store. And you buy your points or in-game, in-app points, gems, to buy your NFTs. And you're not really using the cryptocurrency. It's 100% centralized and regulated through Google and Apple. That is laughable that anyone thinks that that's even slightly you know, along the ethos of NFTs and decentralization and cryptocurrency. But yeah, a lot of these things are extremely centralized. And lo and behold, I mean, if you're really into the ethos and values behind blockchain, you probably are not for highly centralized chains. So, you know, throwing all of that aside, you've got other, other chains like ADA, Cardano, um, but they're not really developing or doing a whole lot, right? Like there's barely any dApps, barely any tokens. Um, you can go through on like coin market cap and they only have lists of tokens for like, um, Avalanche, Binance, uh, and Solana and Polkadot. They don't really have much else because there's so few tokens on most of these chains like Cardano, um, or some of these other ones that we were talking about, like Neo. Um, it has barely anything on it. Um, Tezos has barely anything on it. Sis and Neo are also really old and they really haven't achieved much at all. So in my opinion, they've pretty much stagnated. Um, ICP is interesting, but it's very technical and probably would turn away a lot of people because of the way they do the security for it and how you access it. Um, I mean, all I have to do is read you one of their URLs for one of their top used sites to understand why no one is going to really take this seriously. Uh, bear with me. The URL is az5sd-cqaa-aaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaaa
you know, wait, a, just wait a little bit. And then here we are now and data is, you know, completely down in the dumps. And again, most of the market is, but it's evaluating what do these things actually offer? Are they going to go back up? Because it tends to be the case that each cycle, the top 20 is almost completely replaced by something else. That generally seems to be what it's like. I mean, obviously not like the stable coins, Bitcoin and Ethereum, et cetera. But a lot of the times you see like the top 10, top 20 completely shift and become something entirely different each cycle. And um, I don't see a lot of these coming back because sent they're extremely centralized or they don't really offer a lot. And um, Adam is unique in that it has uh, Althea, which is like trying to provide internet to places where you normally might not be able to. And more interesting than that, I really like ThorChain and ThorSwap, which I did a full video on and how it's one of the greatest uh, decentralized ways to swap cryptocurrency across chains. Very, very innovative, very, very great. So, you know, I'm very bullish on Atom, Rune, all that stuff, even though it's completely in the dumps right now just in terms of the innovation, what they actually offer. Maybe I'm missing some things. Maybe there is some extremely innovative thing on some of these chains that I'm missing. But if it's at the cost of centralization or some of these other things that I've mentioned, you know, it's not really worth it. Plus, if we're going to start talking about gas fees, since a lot of these, the main thing is that they're uh, touting that they have low gas fees. Well, even, you know, platforms like BSC, uh, like Binance coin, they're starting to have a lot higher gas fees. And I've noticed myself when I'm like swapping from BNB to BSC, sometimes it's like two, $3 when I'm actually doing that swap. So, you know, it's getting up there and it's not even close to Ethereum. So I can't imagine what the cost would be once we are up there. Cause right now Ethereum is only a few dollars in gas fees as well. Um, and if you look at like the peaks of some of these coins like Solana or Avalanche, when they had massive spikes, their gas fees went way up too. And again, they're only a fraction of Ethereum. So I can't imagine how expensive they would be if they actually were an Ethereum killer. So that's the thing too, right? Like they're good until they're not good. And if Ethereum 2.0 ships fairly soon, then none of this is really going to matter. We won't really need any of these chains uh, because they're not really offering a whole lot. Most of them just offer dApps that you already have on Ethereum and you don't really need new versions of like, it's nice to have dApps on different chains to do, you know, useful functions. But if there's 50 of the same dApp and it's like, wow, there's 60 dApps on this chain, but 50 of them are just, you know, exact replicas of what's already in existence. And then the other 10 are just, you know, a few random little things that don't really do much and they're not really that innovative it's not really a value proposition, right? All most of these chains, their only value proposition is we have lower gas fees than Ethereum. This is kind of like a, a moot point. It's like when people compare Doge to Bitcoin and they say, well, Doge is way cheaper to use than Bitcoin. So Doge is the best uh, transactional currency. When it's like, no, if we were going to compare Doge to a transactional currency, we compare it to Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, uh, Dash, etc., and Doge is terrible. It's extremely more expensive and inefficient compared to these other chains. So you have to make sure you are comparing things apples to apples and what they actually offer the the community at large versus what is like promised or you know making a a bad or like a um, a disingenuous comparison to sort of prop one up over the other. So. That's my thoughts on that. Um, you know, and again, as I said, a lot of the gas fees on these platforms. So yeah, some are really, really great, but that's one of the only good things that they offer. That's not unique anymore. All a lot of these chains offer at least cheaper gas fees or very low gas fees. And if you were just going based on gas fees, then you would go back to those transactional cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin Cash, Dash, etc but you still want something to be able to offer NFTs and smart contracts and all these things. So that makes sense. But a lot of these don't really live up to it. I mean, I really like Hive and I really like Adam Cosmos, but you know, Hive is very small and Adam is very small too, and it's still growing and they still need 
more adoption and and they need to become more user friendly and get more people in their ecosystem and keep growing and maybe those ones are just early on but a lot of these other ones you know they've been around for so long if they really were going to kill ethereum or you know be a successful alternative then they already would have that's kind of the main argument that i'm making and it's not that i'm an eth maxi or anything like that a maximalist where I think Ethereum is the best. Uh, I use coins based on use case. So what can it actually do and what does it actually offer and what kind of value does it provide? Does it actually have developers? Does it actually have dApps? Does it actually have a lot of usage? That's kind of the most important thing to know that the community is actually going somewhere. And I've only got a few more minutes here, but you know, just having the ability to create tokens, NFTs, do smart contracts, and less gas fees isn't really a new innovative thing. It's just a band-aid on Ethereum gas fees. And if and when Ethereum gas fees are solved, I really don't believe a lot of these things are going to last. And this is kind of like the dot-com bubble where anyone who had a domain name was getting tons of money. And then after a year or so, once they realized that they didn't really do anything innovative, they didn't really produce much, they didn't have much profit, they all went to zero and disappeared and only the really useful internet companies stayed around and were successful and that's kind of the dot-com bubble and i would liken this exactly to that where a lot of these are going to go to zero they're not really going to be that useful people are going to sort of wake up to uh what they're being offered by these things and the saddest part is you know i see so many crypto and finance influencers recommending Vivi and Omi. And I assume they're probably, you know, getting paid off or getting massive and they have a massive investment or whatever, or they're just cashing in on the NFT hype stuff. I just think it's really disingenuous because it's completely against the ethos of blockchain technology, in my opinion. Again, a lot of these um, cryptos only have a handful of tokens on their chains. Um, Ethereum is, you know, has so, so many. And, um, you know, just a lot of these platforms, they just, they're each chain seems to have its own problems as you go across. And even something like Polygon Matic, uh, which isn't even really an Ethereum competitor, but sort of works on top of or alongside Ethereum, even that has its problems. I couldn't transfer my Matic for a while. They were running into all these issues. And I said, you know what? Not going to deal with this until this is a little more evolved. But that's kind of my thoughts on this. Um, I've written a little bit more on some other things that I thought were relevant to mention, like, you know, Polkadot, uh, is run by web three foundation, which is a part of the WEF. I won't even go down that rabbit hole. I'll just, you know, put that out there for you guys to decide on. Um, but yeah, I'm extremely skeptical of the success of a lot of these things and how they're, especially how they market themselves against Ethereum. I think it's really disingenuous and it's tricking a lot of people or leading a lot of people to think it's like, oh, well, I missed the, the, the run up on Ethereum. So maybe I can catch the next Ethereum, the Ethereum killer, the next big thing. And, uh, now that's a little bit past and it's more about NFT hype and all that stuff, but that's still kind of in the same realm. I'm very confident in where Ethereum is going to go. Even without ETH 2.0, I mean, gas fees have really come down. It's much more affordable to use. Let me know what you guys think, though. I'm always curious to know, like, where do you think uh, these other chains are going? Are they really competing with Ethereum? Um, is there an ETH killer out there? Did I sort of, you know, skip over something? Did I, you know, miss something? Is there some really cool, innovative thing on some of these chains that I'm missing out or, you know, wrongly calling something uh, centralized or overly centralized compared to Ethereum? You tell me. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Do comment hashtag number one ham in the comments below to let me know that you watched to the very end. I'm Scott Cunningham, aka Scotty Business, signing off. Cheers.